Hey everyone and welcome to Collider's Top 10 Star Wars Deleted Scenes. Joining me today on my left is Mr. John Campia. And we got over here on my right, Mark Ellis. And you know, The Force Awakens comes out, finally all get to experience a new Star Wars movie. And when you think about the original trilogy, most fans would say it's pretty perfect. But there were a lot of scenes they shot for that movie that we never got a chance to check out. Yeah, like as in most movies that are shot today, an awful lot of footage is shot, edited, produced, post-production that we never get to see. But now in the modern age of Blu-ray extras and deleted scenes and the magic of YouTube, a lot of these scenes are resurfacing. And some of those that you watch, you're like, this is great, it adds to the canon. How did this not make it into the final cut? And most of them will say, it's probably a good thing that it never made it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go with some of the best scenes that were almost a part of Star Wars history. Number 10, the Wampa Strikes Back. We all remember the start of The Empire Strikes Back. Luke is attacked by a wampa, dragged to the creature's cave, and narrowly escapes by cutting off the beast's arm, and that is the last we see of him. However, in this deleted scene, a wampa makes a return and not only attacks the rebel base, he is locked into a room and attacks the snow troopers when they mistakenly enter the room. I know I left The Empire Strikes Back and said, man, I needed to see more wampas. We get him in here. I like watching this scene because it shows the engineer of C-3PO, amongst other things. And C-3PO, a droid who really gets the brunt of a lot of people's kind of wrath during The Empire Strikes Back, it shows what a clever droid he can be, him and R2-D2. And John, you know, I always thought that the Wampas were put into The Empire Strikes Back simply to help mask the fact that Mark Hamill had recently been in a car crash, so had some scars on there, so we needed something to mm. make him scarred. This scene indicates that maybe they were a bigger force on Hoth than we realized. Oh my God, I'm so glad this wasn't in the movie. <laughs> it looked so bad. And even in like the even in the special editions, when you get to see it, it looks so bad. In the original editions, uh, no. <laughs> and that just looks so ridiculous and busting through the wall and all that kind of stuff. And I wonder if that great scene in Galaxy Quest where they teleport up the rock monster into the room, with a, I wonder if that might have been inspired by this particular deleted scene. No, this is one that isn't just the situation of, oh, no, it's kind of good they left. No, no, I'm really glad they left this I out. share your sentiment, but it did make me want to watch Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas because I want to see the abominable <laughs> snowman again. Number nine, Leia and Luke almost kiss. It took us three movies to find out that Luke and Leia were actually brother and sister, and that was after The Empire Strikes Back. In the released version of the film, they share a kiss when Leia attempts to make Han jealous. Well, in this deleted scene, it seems like there is an actual attraction between the two. Creepy. You know, I'm just a good old-fashioned <laughs> Southern boy. I saw nothing wrong with what happened here. <laughs> no, uh, no. I, you know what's cool about this, though, is that it proves that for all of the canon that we celebrate in Star Wars today, and that everything is now almost on a biblical level, back when they were making these movies, they were flying by the seat of their pants a little bit. This scene is a clear indication that we weren't sure that Luke and Leia were brother and sister yet. If you'd read that book, How Star Wars Conquered the Universe, there's a really good section in there about how in between Empire and Jedi, despite what some things George has said, George came up with the notion of having Luke and Leia be brother and sister before Return of the Jedi, but they didn't know that when they were shooting Empire Strikes Back. If you look at this scene, this potential deleted scene, not knowing Luke and Leia become brother and sister, it's actually a very interesting dramatic element. They're setting up a little bit of a loose love triangle, a little bit of sense of jealousy, who's she gonna end up a little twilightish if you <laughs> might make. If it wasn't for the fact that we know what happens in Return of the Jedi, I'd say maybe this is one that could have stayed. Knowing the future of these two and their relationship and what they really are, no, I'm very it would have just seemed creepy at that point to put it in. Number eight, human Jabba the Hutt waiting for Han outside the Millennium Falcon. Jabba the Hutt is one of the most intimidating and disgusting characters we have seen in the Star Wars franchise. He debuted officially in The Return of the Jedi, and many men are happy he did because he was responsible for making Princess Leia wear that gold bikini. But Jabba wasn't always meant to be a gross space slug. In this deleted scene from Episode 4, we see that Jabba was actually cast as a human. And human Jabba looked like he'd been dining at Pizza the Hutt quite often. <laughs> when you watch this scene, and you know, this is one of the ones, the famous ones 
one they brought back for the Star Wars A New Hope special edition, but they CGI Jabba in. It, 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 it's, it's intriguing to me to think of Jabba not as this huge, disgusting slug, but actually as somewhat of a space mobster, somebody that people like Han Solo have to answer to. It would have given it more of a Goodfellas dynamic in this film. I agree. I love the way that they actually took the hut, but the character of Jabba, I think, could have worked as a human as well. He could have worked as a human. And I thought it was intriguing the way he almost had an Irish mobster kind of <laughs> feel to him. And that was interesting. But even if Jabba didn't end up being a hut, as, as we now know him and love him as, even if they had had him as a human character, I'm glad this is a scene that didn't stay in there. It disrupted the flow of the movie. It didn't really serve to forward the purpose of the movie or the narrative of the movie whatsoever. We already know because of the conversation Han had with Greedo that Jabba's a bad dude. He's after Han. He wants his money. Han wants to stay one step ahead of him. We All this stuff is already established. We didn't need that scene to do it anymore. It just would have slowed the movie down. I'm glad they took it out. Number seven, Sandstorm on Tatooine. In Return of the Jedi, our fearless crew goes through a lot to escape the evil Jabba the Hutt and his minions. In the original cut, our friends escape Jabba and then fly off to continue their adventure. It wasn't that easy in this deleted scene. The planet of Tatooine has a very shaky environment and it is evident in this scene where our heroes are caught in a horrific sandstorm. And I see what they were trying to do with this scene where, first of all, we get to see the full wrath of what Tatooine can be yep. on screen. And it also is a little bit of foreshadowing that, yes, we just got through this adventure and we defeated the hut and I threw a bone in the Rancor's mouth. We got out of that alive. But what we're about to face is scarier than anything we've seen to this point. So I don't think this, this needed to be in there. And I also like the reiteration of seeing Han and Luke and how it's like, you know what, now we've saved each other's ass, so we're kind of equal. It would have been interesting to give a little bit more of a perspective on the harsh environment of Tatooine, absolutely, but again, wasn't needed. Everything that they did in that like two minutes of extra footage, they accomplished in 15 seconds as we saw the Falcon go in one direction and the X-Wing go the other and a quick conversation. This was good editing. This was a good way to tighten it up, keep the story moving. Once Jabba was gone, we didn't need Tatooine anymore. And I'm not convinced this didn't. it wasn't edited that way simply because of the amazing John Williams music. When you right. see the sail barge going off for the last time, then it makes that, it turns that left, and then yeah. dun, 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 then we see the two spaceships. That's all you need in the movie. That's why it stayed. Number six, Luke hears stories of his father before the assault on the Death Star. Luke didn't learn the true nature of who his father was until Empire Strikes Back. He was given snippets throughout his life, and we first hear information about his daddy when Obi-Wan gives him some detail from a certain point of view. In this deleted scene, Luke is reunited with his hometown friend Biggs, but then is given yet another tidbit about his father through a pilot from the Rebellion. Seeing Luke and Biggs hang together again is great, but this this almost feels like, you know whenever there's a politician running for office and they make a claim, <laughs> and then they ask their friends from high school about that, they're like, oh, that never happened like that, never happened like that. This is the fear you run into with people talking about Luke's dad before George Lucas had really decided who Luke's dad was going to be. I love seeing that Obi-Wan has his point of view and then keep it mysterious. We don't need a bunch of pilots going up to Luke and saying, oh, dude, your dad was awesome, man. I hung out with him. He was a little bit wooden of an actor, but he was a really nice guy <laughs> and a great pilot. We didn't need this scene. It was a real shame when he became a Dark Lord of the Sith and killed, killed all those children, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, that lightsaber? Killed a lot of kids with it. I'm glad you're holding on to it for sentimental value, though. Yeah, it was a scene that I always kind of regretted that we didn't get to meet Biggs. Because, you know, right from the original cut of the classic trilogy, we hear, damn it, Biggs, where are you? You're like, I've, And the fact that there are these deleted scenes with Biggs, that's cool and everything, but it's just cool and everything. Didn't serve the story and actually just muddies the water a little bit about how much George knew in advance he was going to do with certain characters. Really? You knew his dad? No, it's probably a good thing that I got left out. Yeah, I mean, you definitely deserve to see Biggs Darklighter's relief pitcher mustache in some <laughs> scene in this movie, just not this one. Didn't you used to be on the A's? <laughs> Number five, Palpatine orders Jerjerod to fire at Endor. In the original trilogy, there are good guys and bad guys, and the Empire are the bad guys. In most of the scenes, whether it's orders to torture prisoners or blow up planets, the soldiers of the Empire never seem to take issue with the loss of life. However, in this deleted scene, we see a different side to one of the Imperial officers. There is conflict. 
Uh, Jared Gerard's one of those guys for the Empire that you do not want going on talk shows because you get the feeling he's going to speak his mind about what the Empire is <laughs> doing right and what the Empire is doing wrong. And we can see his confliction in this, which is why I like the fact that it's not in Return of the Jedi because especially the original trilogy, you're right. There's good guys and there's bad guys. And in this particular mythical storytelling style, we don't want to see a whole lot of conflict between them. Now, whether that changes in future Star Wars movies, I'm totally up for, but I don't think it would have made that much sense by the time we had already gotten to these events at the end of Jedi. I am almost on board with this scene because I always like it. I've always said that the most scary bad guys are the ones who think they're the good guys. And when you have a guy like this who's really concerned about his troops that are down there and the ethical decision he has to face, face about turning this massive weapon of theirs on his own men. Now, one of the things I really, really dug about this was something that happens right before that scene when you see Judge Rod preventing Vader from going in to see the Emperor, right? Because, you know, he had been bullied around by Vader a little bit earlier on the film, and now he gets to go, you will not enter. I really wanted him to say bitch. <laughs> you will not enter, bitch, before he starts to The only reason I'm going to say I'm glad it's not in there is because they introduced the same element that was in A New Hope. It was the countdown before the Death Star was in range to blow up Yavin. This one was a countdown before they get the Death Star turned enough to blow up Endor. And now it's not just a race against the clock, it's also a race against them trying to stop the prevention, the destruction of Endor, which is the exact same thing they did in the first movie. It would have felt a little too similar. Number four, Luke Skywalker's original introduction. The first time we remember seeing Luke is when C-3PO and R2-D2 arrive at his home on Tatooine. This wasn't the original plan. In this scene, Luke notices the battle in space and his curiosity begins to swirl. Luke sees from the ground what we just witnessed in space. Ooh, I love me watching this scene. I had not seen this until we started prepping for this very list, and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe, I, I'm not sure if I want this scene to be in A New Hope or not. I can't believe it wasn't included simply because of how cool it looks. And it's like, look, we just saw the space battle. Now Luke is checking it out. We know how he dreams nothing more than to be a part of the action going on up there, this scene would have clearly revealed that to us going forward in the movie. But if you had the choice to what reveals Luke's dreams and his vision of the future and about wanting and yearning adventure that's out there, him standing next to that little Wally knockoff droid staring <laughs> up with some binoculars or him standing with one foot up in the rock looking out at the setting dual suns. Clearly, that's the superior shot that communicates to us his dreams and his ambitions far better than that other one. And have them both in there, to me, would have felt a little bit repetitive. You, you sold me. Anything that's going to taint the experience of watching him look out into the sun, <laughs> I'm not on board with, so you're right. Number three, Yoda's test. Yoda is arguably one of the best characters in the Star Wars lore. His wisdom and skill are shown in The Empire Strikes Back, and the tests he put Luke through makes the Jedi in training strong. We remember the cave and the balancing of rocks, but in this scene, it seems like there were plans to do a bit more. Luke, like his father, was impatient and emotional. We see this as he becomes frustrated with the extended training. I was excited to watch this scene, and when I checked it out, I was like, I'm glad this is not in the final cut, because it seems to be one of the themes of this vid list is that, it, you know, there's there, there's there's scenes that display what we want to convey, and then in the original movie, we get to see that in a lot less time. Just Luke yelling at Ben, at Ben's voice, and he's talking to Yoda in Yoda's little hut, and he stands up too quick, and he hits his head on the top. That's all we needed to know about this stuff. I liked watching it, but I'm glad it's not an empire. In theory... I wanted it in there, but maybe not the way they executed it. I mean, a little bit of Luke swinging the, the lightsaber around, and every time he does, hearing Yoda go, <laughs> like, that was it. See, I always saw one of the shortcomings of Empire might have been that it really feels like Luke's training happened in the course of an afternoon. Now, it's not supposed to be that fast, but sometimes when you're watching, it can kind of feel like it was just very quick. He did a couple of quick exercises, and now I can go have a lightsaber battle with Darth Vader. Yay! <laughs> Maybe, you know, lose a hand, but... So I always kind of like the idea that an extended training scene giving us more of what he was doing, I just didn't like the way it was executed here. So in theory, I wanted more training, but I didn't want this particular footage in there. And you could have set it to like some sort of great sports training montage music, like a Survivor <laughs> Eye of the Tiger would have fit perfectly with this clip. Number two, Luke constructing his new lightsaber. The first time we see Luke in Return of the Jedi, it is mysterious and a bit ominous. 
Luke arrives, chokes out some pigs, and begins to negotiate with Jabba the Hutt. In this deleted scene, we see that the original plan for Luke's first appearance in Return of the Jedi was very different. He is contacted by his father, Darth Vader, and being tempted to join the dark side. We also see that he is constructing a new lightsaber, the green blade that R2-D2 will toss to him over the Sarlacc pit. Uh, my personal favorite of any of the deleted scenes we're going to talk about because I'm not that on board with Darth Vader contacting him at begin of Return of the Jedi because it just seems at this point like Darth Vader is just like a, like a jilted ex-lover. He just keeps calling Luke and <laughs> trying to convert. Hey, Luke, come on over to the dark side, man. We got a hot tub here. Come on. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, wink. Just let me know if you can even hear me at this point. <laughs> but then the second half of the scene, we see Luke building the lightsaber, the famous green lightsaber, R2-D2, and C-3PO are hanging outside the cave. I so want this to be in the movie, but I'm glad it's not, if for no other reason, because the first time you meet Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi is one of my favorite shots in any movie, period. That it, it's, it, it's a little bit farther out, and you see the, the palace doors going up, and you see this hooded figure walk in before he chokes out the pigs up close. You're just like, oh my god, a Jedi Knight has just entered the building. This is finally an entry on the slits that I wish had ah. stayed in the movie for a couple of reasons. I actually, I agree with you about that great impact, but I don't think having seen Luke earlier takes away from that impact of that door opening because now you know, now Luke's on the scene. And Luke already kind of gave off this badass vibe when he's in that cave making that thing. So it kind of adds to it that this ain't the nice little farm boy coming through this door. This is now a dude who's wearing the black hood. When you're wearing a black hood in the Star Wars universe, that means you're there to kick some ass. So it was really <laughs> cool. And it gave us a little bit of context into R2 and 3PO's purpose and why they were walking by themselves off to Jabba's palace. And it gives us a visual cue. Oh look, he is building himself a new lightsaber for anybody who might wonder once R2 shoots that thing out. Wait a minute, didn't he lose that thing? So I actually really do like this one. I think it would have fit. I don't think it would have disrupted the flow of the narrative. This is one I actually wish had stayed in. Are you on board with the part about Darth Vader trying to contact Luke too? Because it just seems like Darth Vader, like his daily routine is he's gonna go land somewhere, a bunch of stormtroopers are gonna watch him have a meeting, then he's gonna go try to call his kid who wants nothing to do with him. Yeah, no, I'm not for that part. And part of the reason why I'm not for that part isn't just that it's Vader in his chamber, which I dig seeing Vader in his chamber, but it's the way he's calling it Luke. Luke. It's a little like what? It, no. <laughs> I don't want him feeling like that. It, yeah, no, it felt just off. So cut that part out, and I wish the scene had stayed. Our number one is Luke and Biggs on Tatooine. In the final cut of A New Hope, many casual fans might hear references to Biggs and say, who the hell is that? In this deleted scene, not only do we learn who Biggs is, but we get a feel of the relationship that he and Luke have, and also the first mention of the rebellion against the Empire. What the hell is Tashi Station? What are power converters? Like, I don't know about any of that stuff, but I know that Luke and Biggs hung out a lot on Tatooine, and when he's back on leave from his training and he's about to join the rebellion, you can see in Luke Skywalker's eyes, oh my god, this is what I wanted to do. And so it makes a little bit more sense later when we see just how fervent he is about going on any adventure, especially one that might lead to defeating the Empire. Empire. So Luke and Biggs in this scene I think is great. A New Hope is it's pretty much flawless. So there's not anything I'd say needs to be in there, but this is one I could have been up for. You know what? Okay, so follow me here. Back in the old days, back in the when the internet was really just becoming really popular and we had these things called BBS boards, the, the uh, bulletin board systems, that was really a new incarnation for young nerdy guys to meet girls for the first time. <laughs> anyway, so you'd meet a girl online, you text back and forth, you think, oh my gosh, this girl sounds so amazing and so awesome. And then you meet them and you're like, oh. So like, so that kind of happened. With Biggs, it's the same thing. You have this promise of this cool other character that's a friend of Luke. They used to shoot womp rats with him and all this in the T-17s or whatever the model was. That's, I cannot wait to meet this guy. And then you meet him, it's like, uh, you're kind of a loser, aren't you? So I am personally really glad that the big stuff got left out, in particular the scene. So you're saying Biggs is just a girl you meet on Match.com that doesn't live up to the picture profile you saw. Biggs is the Star Wars <laughs> so incarnation of Catfish. <laughs> Biggs catfished us all, basically. The original Catfish. Yes. <laughs> well, there you have it, our top 10 Star Wars deleted scenes.
You know, Star Wars fans are a global community, and they're coming out in full force right now. We know how passionate you guys are, so comment right now and let us know which scene do you think should have made it in one of the final cuts. And since you're here right now, why don't you break out that Jedi holocron of yours and use it to subscribe to this YouTube channel. <laughs> Keep up to date on everything we got going on over here at Collider Video, from Jedi Council to Heroes, Daily Movie Talks, Mailbags, Recap Shows, you name it, we got it. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. For John Campia and Mark Ellis, I'm Natasha Martinez, and may the Force be with you.